Hey, good morning. Isn't it a great day? Oh, yeah, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord today. You know, wherever you are, that's what the sanctuary is going to be today. And so we invite you this morning, as I grab my phone, to, uh, as you get on live, to share this on your page as we get going. I'm going to do that right now. All right, share it on my page. Share this on your page. Uh, invite others to uh, watch and uh, be a part with you. As we get going today, we've got some uh, super special things today. We're going to we get some special music. We've got some uh, announcements. We've got some uh, graduates today, uh, some songs, a message. I uh, just invite you to just really uh, take part in, in everything we, we do this morning. So as everybody's getting on, be sure and say hi to everybody. Uh, welcome them to church this morning, Facebook Live, and uh, uh, with that this morning, uh, we're going to start with a song. Uh, we sent those out last night for you, uh, but if you didn't get them, we're going to do Praise Him, Praise Him, and then we're going to do Open the Eyes of My Heart, and we're going to close today with this little light of mine. That's going to go with the, with the message today, so uh, as you're singing, uh, be sure and tell everybody hi as you're Greeting and fellowshipping with one another. Be sure and sing and share this on your page as we go. Praise him, praise him. Okay, girls. Praise him, praise him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing your word, his wonderful love proclaim. Praise him, you for all you do, everything you uh, provide for us, everything that you supply for us, uh, the way that you love us. Uh, Father, it's a, it's a great day uh, to be able to worship you, and we're so thankful for the opportunity for that. And So Father, we lift up each one that's listening this morning, and Father, I know sometimes through technology we have some problems uh, uh, with this and with that, but we just ask that uh, through the day that um, you would let this go smoothly, and for those that are, that are listening, that they would be able to uh, uh, hear what you have to say to them individually. Father, as we, as we sing praises to your name, as we uh, lift these uh, concerns up in prayers, whatever it might be, uh, Father, whether we look into your word, that you would just be uh, the one that receives all the glory and honor. Uh, so we give this time to you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, continue to uh, share one another uh, about uh, and, and uh, welcome to join us. And uh, the announcements this week, we have... Uh, uh, Wednesday night Bible study at 7, uh, so we encourage you to uh, be back here on Facebook Live at 7. Uh, be in prayer for the deacons and your pastor as we um, work through getting ready to uh, move back into, or transition back into the, the sanctuary of the church. Uh, it'll be a, a whole different setting for you as we go back. We're going to have to 
uh, social distance, and so that's going to be a look. It's going to be, it's going to be way different than it is before, and uh, so, uh, but it's going to be exciting because we get to be uh, somewhat back together again. Uh, you know, as, as we get back, you know, you're encouraged the way they're saying, uh, uh, you know, mask if you need gloves, whatever it is. Um, we're going to be sure and social distance, and, and so, but uh, it'd be great to be able to uh, to fellowship and to be back together again as we work to add and. And we'll let you know how, how that processes and how that goes and, and when that's going to be here uh, real shortly. Um, so Wednesday night, Bible study. Uh, for those of my special music people that are listening this morning, I have one special music for this morning, and I have one for next Sunday. I don't have anything for Wednesday nights, uh, so I need you uh, special music people to be getting some, some more songs to me. Uh, so everybody can, can hear and kind of uh, be excited about what's going on. So, so get on that. Uh, get those things to me. Um, the Pomona Food Pantry, again, will be Thursday from 1 to 4. Uh, we've had a good outing with everybody that comes in and shares with that. So that's for the West Franklin School District. Uh, supplies are getting uh, kind of low. So you North Baptist people, uh, we need lots of things, especially uh, canned veggies and canned fruit at this point. So if you're listening. Her graduation cap again in front of the high school, and uh, again that'll be uh, coming up here here shortly. All right, so uh, we come to a time of prayer. Is that where we're at? Hey, yeah, we've got some announcements, but we did those. So uh, prayer-wise, this morning, um, uh, technology is moving slow this morning. If you think it's been interrupted, if you can hear me, if you go out and come back in. Uh, that'll probably get you going again on your um, on your Facebook Live. So work with that as we go. Uh, prayer concerns, again, I invited you to be in prayer for the deacons and your pastor. That would be me as we start to uh, maneuver through these uh, new waters of going back into uh, a public-type service. And so we uh, encourage you to be in prayer for that. Uh, we have... Several in our congregation that uh, many of you know what's going on in their lives, and so I'm going to lift up some names. Um, Christy and Darlene and Dennis, Scott and Tanya, uh, Linda, uh, I know there's many more, uh, uh, Leota. Uh, so if you have these on your prayer concerns, be sure and be uh, praying for them. If you don't, uh, lift these people up as well. Continue to be in prayer for President Trump and Vice President Pence, our elected officials, the Congress and the House, uh, at, the, at the national level, at the state level, with our governor and and uh, uh, the Senate and the House, uh, down to our elected uh, local officials, our county officials. And you know, I'm not. Uh, this is not a political announcement on whether you like who or what. This is an inv invitation for you to pray for them uh, that they make uh, the proper decisions as they. Uh, maneuver through this water as well. A lot of them uh, obviously have never uh, faced anything like this before. And so uh, prayer is the most important aspect and to get God in the middle of it. Uh, I want to continue to pray for our missionaries, uh, those that are continuing to be out of the field, those who have been brought home, uh, that, you would, uh, that they would be refreshed, that they would be continuing to uh, do what God has them to do even if they've been brought back. Uh, God has a purpose and a plan for their lives as well. So we invite you to uh, uh, be in prayer for that. Um, let's see. With that, I think uh, we're to the point of, of our prayer. So if you would uh, uh, join me in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you again for a time to, uh, to come together. And, you know, and we, we praise you this morning because we know that none of this has... Uh, caught you by surprise. Uh, we know that uh, you're fully aware of every situation and every life and probably even know the numbers on our head, uh, the, the, of our hairs. And uh, so you specifically know each one of us individually and so you know what's going on. And so even during this time of, of crisis, during the pandemic of the coronavirus, Father, I just ask that you would in our hearts to turn to you, uh, whether it be for health concerns, uh, financial uh, loneliness, uh, whatever it be, uh, that we would turn to you because of uh, our lostness. Um, sometimes things that uh, happen in our lives, Lord, have been allowed so that we will try to not do things on our own, but, but give them up to you and allow you to uh, provide through those things. And so we ask that we could 
see you provide in our lives. And Father, that we would trust you enough to uh, uh, give up the things uh, on, our, on a daily basis that, that really we're not even capable of handling in the first place. Uh, and so, Lord, I know it's difficult. It's difficult for all, for all of us, but uh, uh, that's an important aspect of our lives. And, and Father, we do lift up our elected officials. We think of our president and our vice president and, and just all those that are involved, whether it be the Congress or the House at the national level, uh, down to our state, to the governor, the, the different CDC people, the, um, the senators, the House, um, uh, our, our county officials, our city officials, the well, let me think of the first responders, the EMTs, the, the firemen, the police department, the sheriff's department. Uh, we think of the, the nurses and the hospital staff. We think of the doctors that are just continuing to go on through all of this. And, and Father, as we kind of open up, uh, as, as you would say, in our, in our communities, Father, we ask for uh, discernment and direction on, on what we should do and the things that we should be about. And that you would help us to understand the, the need of a, a deeper relationship with you and a lessening of our relationship with the world. Mm -hmm. And Father, we pray again for our missionaries, uh, each and every one of those. Uh, we ask that you would uh, touch them, whether they're out on the field or, or whether they're brought back home for specific reasons. And Father, that you would minister to them in a, in a mighty way. Uh, that you would encourage and strengthen them and allow them to share the gospel no matter where they are whether they're out on the field or whether they're home. And Father, we do thank you for um, our school children, uh, uh, whether they be elementary age or college age. And I know this year has been a, an unprecedented time for them to, uh, uh, to finish this spring semester. And so we thank you for the provision for that. And, and I know those here in our community have finished, and, and I know some around the uh, country are still uh, winding down uh, what they have left. And and so we just ask that you would encourage them to, to finish strong, uh, that you would uh, allow them to see uh, you're, you're far greater than even this uh, pandemic we're going through and far greater than even the things that, uh, uh, whatever the schooling is, but you would bless them with just being able to, to finish that strong. And as we said this morning with our graduates, we ask that you would encourage them and strengthen them as we as we lift them up, not only in prayer, but just in encouragement. And, and uh, Father, that you would bless them for continuing to uh, uh, strive to uh, become a better person that can be utilized in their communities in a better way. And so, Father, we ask for your blessings upon them as well. And Father, I pray this morning for each one that's listening, whether it's listening now or listening later through the webpage or, or through uh, the internet or whatever it is, that you would strengthen them, that you would open their hearts and their minds for what you have for them. Uh, Father, we just ask for your blessings to be uh, bountiful. But Father, those blessings come through our obedience to you. And so help us to be obedient in things that we do, things that we say. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but, but doers also. And so, Father, let's take what you have given us and incorporate it into our lives. Transform us, Lord, into something that uh, you would have us to be useful for you. Show us the picture of what that is and speak to us this morning, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this morning we're going to have some special music, right? So... Get your toe tappers ready, and uh, we'll get started with special music here.
All right, and that was Emily with Have a Little Talk with Jesus. Great song, and, and she did it so well, it's hard not to not want to just get going when she played it. She had a gift for that. The Lord really blessed her in that. My support staff told me I got out of order today, and I, I did, but that's okay because that's just what I do. And so um, we don't have an order, we just do it the way we do it. And so we're going to uh, move from uh, Emily's song into our worship song this morning, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. And, and again, I, I continue to encourage you to, to share this on your page. I continue to encourage you to um, communicate with one another. This is our time of, of fellowship. Uh, be sure and say hi. Uh, let, let others know that we're, we're praying for one another. Uh, uh, some of the prayer guards are listening this morning, and, um, you know, they, they understand uh, what's going on. Uh, with, uh, with the struggles that we're facing with this pandemic. And so um, it, it, it's a great time to share with one another. Uh, it's exciting to have everybody that has joined. We're really blessed by having all you come together. <clears throat> and so uh, this morning, we're going to uh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And really, this is going to be our worship song this morning that leads into the message time. And so I really pray for you that it, that it is more than just a song uh, that's a tribute to the Lord, and as we get ready to uh, uh, to go, that you will be ready for the message that, that God has for you, and uh, uh, that, that you'll hear from Him this morning. And that's really our goal and our desire is to be able to communicate with the Lord and, and hear from Him. And so, open the eyes of our heart, Lord. <clears throat> open the eyes of my heart.
presence with us. And we're so thankful for what you've done for each one of us through Jesus Christ. And, and Father, we are we are truly blessed. And uh, Lord, I had a friend from a, a message from a friend this morning, and, and his, his words were so true. It's, it's just that you know we just don't have a complete understanding. We don't have a, a, complete, a complete belief system uh, to allow us to live that out. And and so help us individually uh, to do that. So as we look into your word this morning, Father, I ask for clarity uh, from you, not from me, but from you, uh, for each one of our hearts so that that we truly can understand it, uh, that we truly can believe it, and that in the midst of that, that that it would begin to affect the way that we live. Uh, We would live for you and not for the world. Uh, We would live for your purposes and your desires. And Father, we would see the ultimate sacrifice you paid for each one of us through your Son, Jesus Christ, upon the cross. And Father, that 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 would build a desire in our hearts to become more and deeper in our relationship with you. And so Father, we just ask that you would speak to us today. Uh, Use your word, use circumstances, use this Facebook Live to communicate to the world in which we live. And so Father, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, this morning I forgot to tell you to get your Bible, and I hope you did. And, and really, uh, I should have said um, get a piece of paper because you are going to need a piece of paper today. And so as we begin, um, I'm going to have Sarah's going to run upstairs on, the, on our printer, and she's going to get some paper for all of our uh, congregants here at the, at the Wilcox Sanctuary. Uh, because at the end of this, I've got something that, that you're going to write down. And uh, you're gonna you're gonna utilize this yourself, and and so you, you need this as much as I do, and I'm gonna do it as well. And so I want to just get you prepared. So so grab a paper, uh, grab a pen, and, and maybe you've already got a notebook and you're ready to go, and that's great if you do. Uh, if not, I encourage you to go ahead and, and grab that and get it. Uh, we're gonna be in Second Timothy today. Uh, we've kind of uh, Huddled out there, we were, we were kind of in there uh, last week on Mother's Day, you know, talking about uh, Timothy and his grandmother and his mother, and, and so uh, we're going to uh, move along in 2 Timothy to chapter 3, uh, one of the most powerful, I believe, scriptures uh, throughout there other than John 3.16. Uh, this is important. And so hopefully you've got your paper, uh, you're back, you maybe got you another cup of coffee on the way, uh, whatever it is. And so in the scripture this morning... Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, thank you, young lady. My handy dandy assistant brought me my paper, so I'll have one ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. This morning I'm going to read from the NIV. And it says, All scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. <coughs> And so again, you know, I say last week we talked about Timothy and, and how he had learned from his mother and his grandmother and, and he learned from the scriptures of old. He'd also learned from the Apostle Paul and as Paul continues this letter that he's writing to Timothy, he says, all scripture. And so if you look at the very beginning of that, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, all scripture. And Paul means at this point, all scripture, and he means he means more than just the Hebrew text that, that Timothy had learned. If Paul would have meant just that, he would have said those scriptures, Timothy, that you learned as a child, you remember those? Because he said those earlier, and he said those things made you wise to salvation. And if Paul would have meant that, he would have said that, and he would have said those scriptures. But he didn't. Paul changed his wording here because he knew that God was bringing forth <clears throat> more at this point, right there, and they were living it. And they were doing it. And God was doing it through the apostles, and those would also be known for us today as scripture. And so what God was doing right then would also become the word of God breathed into life, his scripture. 
And so this included what the Apostle Paul knew, and others knew was the, was the merging in the written form from the Apostles at this very time. And so there's no doubt then that, that God thought, or that, that Paul thought that God was bringing forth something new. And it was new through these apostles. It was new to the first century. It was new to what was going on. And Paul wasn't the only one that thought this way. Now Peter also, uh, the apostle Peter, he gives us the same thought, the same kind of idea, when he included Paul's writings into Scripture. And again, see, we have the concept of Scripture because we have the Old Testament and New Testament, and it's all gathered together there. And so when we think of that, we think exactly of the Bible that we have today. But we have to remember that during this time that like, uh, the Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy, uh, Peter, uh, John, they were, they were living these Scriptures that we read today and unfortunately sometimes take for granted. And so Peter included Paul's writings under that heading of Scripture. And if you, if you were to look at 2 Peter chapter 3, 15 and 16, he goes on and says, Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking them of these matters. His letters contain some of the things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures, to their own destruction. The other scriptures, yes, the Hebrew text that he's talking about, but he's including the Apostle Paul's in there. And so when the Apostle Paul says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, it's God-breathed. And so what we have today in the form of our Bibles is God breathing that thought and that life into these men that penned it so many years ago. And so for us, all scripture is all the Old Testament and all the New. But we need to grasp the thought that God was doing that through them at that point. Now hear this, this is important as we begin. You know, you might, and there have been many who does this, you might believe in the inspiration of God, but in our, in our lives we deny the practice of it. See, my bird said, amen, amen, pastor, amen. She's right on it. But, that, but that's true, see, you, we, we have the word of God, and it's the inspiration of God, but do we live it out? If we don't live it out, then we're denying what God really has to say. Mm -hmm. And we deny it by imposing our, our own meanings on the text instead of letting it speak for itself, <clears throat> by putting more of ourself in the message that God says, and by being more interested in our own opinions than explaining and proclaiming God's word to the world. You know, it's somewhat unfortunate that we post all these things on Facebook about this or that or this or that, and, and we think that that's our life, and we have all these friends, but yet, what are we saying about what God's doing in our life? And I don't mean sharing something that somebody else said. I mean sharing what God is actually doing in your life today. And sometimes it, it's hard lessons. You know, we, we struggle financially. We struggle with health concerns. We struggle with, with all these different things. We struggle with the pandemic. But God is aware of all those things, and he knows, and he allows those things in our lives at times just so we will turn to him so we can see him provide through that. Amen. We get discouraged. We get, um, um, oh, I can't think of the word I want to look for, um, we're depressed. And we fall into depression because we're trying to do it all on our own and in our own power. And that's never the way it's supposed to be because that's what my friend had sent me this morning in Colossians chapter 2. You know, it, it's true. Uh, Jesus has won the victory for us. But we're not living in that victory because we're trying to do things on our own. 
Now, I don't mean, you know, not going to work or not mowing your yard or something like that. But what I mean is we try to do things on our own instead of allowing God to work through us. Instead of resting in Him and just proclaiming His Word. You know, about, about 170 years ago, Adam Clark said, False doctrine cannot prevail long where the sacred scriptures are read and studied. Error prevails only where the book of God is withheld from people. The religion that fears the Bible is not a religion of God. And so think about that. It, false doctrine prevails when we don't use God's word. The message this morning is what's really essential, what's essential. It's amazing that when this pandemic started, Bibles disappeared off the shelves almost as fast as toilet paper. <laughs> Can I get an amen? You know, amen. Y'all know that that toilet paper disappeared. And I'm not sure what kind of pandemic they thought we were having, but that wasn't it. But the Bibles disappeared as well. Now, did they read them? Were they going to read them? Or was that just a safety net in case something happened, I've got the Word of God. And so for us, it, we need to be in it. We need to be active with it every day. Not just on Sunday, not just when we gather together like this. And that's what helps us to combat because it's Jesus' victory. He's the one that leads us over these darkness, over this false teachings, over the false prophets that we still have today. And sometimes it's not withheld from us, but we withheld it, we withhold it from ourselves. Because we don't read it. But then we pull it out Sunday morning because the pastor said we're going to be in St. Timothy and we dust it off and go through and try to find it and, and get to that point of where it is. But see, this scripture this morning, if you go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17, it tells us, how much of the Bible is inspired by the Word of God? And how much is? All. All, all of it is. Paul says, all of Scripture, every part of it, and the position of the word and in the text makes it clear that Paul is saying that the Scripture is both God-breathed and profitable profitable for you. It's useful for you. It teaches you. It rebukes you and me. It corrects us. It trains us in righteousness so that then we become thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so Paul said, Timothy, continue in these things because the Bible makes you complete and equipped for every good work. Now, now hear me though, complete doesn't mean the whole Christian life is about reading the Bible. Complete means that the Bible leads you into and through everything you need. There's nothing new under the sun, Solomon said. Everything has already happened in somebody else's life, and the scripture gives you evidence of that and allows you to come alongside them and see how God provided for them so that you can then see how God is going to provide for you. And so as we see that, that's why I've encouraged you over the last several weeks now to put yourself in the place of those that are in the writings. And so this morning, I want you to put yourself in Timothy's place. And Paul is telling you, hey, whatever your name is, all scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God, which would be you, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work that God has in your life. Now, all of us are not equipped to do everything, but all of us are equipped to do something. And God is the one that equips us to do that. And through his scripture, we find the importance of that. And so it's the it's it's not just about reading the Bible, it's about applying the Bible scripture to our lives. 
The Bible has everything that leads you through it. If you're both, Paul says, if you're both a hearer and a doer of the word, you'll be a complete Christian, thoroughly equipped. But if you're only a hearer, you're only half of what you need to be because you're not doing. And if you're only a doer and not a hearer, then you're still only half complete. It takes both of those things to hear what God is saying and then to do obedience in doing what God says. That makes us complete. And so we, we can't ignore prayer. We can't ignore worship. We can't ignore evangelism. We can't ignore works because the Bible tells us to do those things. Being a hearer and a doer is what makes us complete. So, so Paul began this letter to Timothy, and he was warning him about dangerous times that were coming. There are Christians who are caught up in those perilous times, then sometimes others go into to hiding even. And that's not what we're supposed to do. Paul says that we're supposed to stand strong, and we're supposed to stand strong on the Word of God. So, okay, we've established, and I hope you've got an understanding of this, that all Scripture is God-breathed. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, what is essential? Over the last couple months, since March, about mid-March, and here we are mid-May, we've seen some things that we thought were essential to life that were not really essential at all. And if you ask me, and I know you didn't, but I'm going to share with you anyway, God did a little clearing out of our calendars so that we could spend some time with Him. Mm. You know, I saw... On a Facebook post, somebody said something about one of the most useless things for 2020 is your calendar. That, that could be true. But I really believe God cleared it out so that we would spend time with him. And unfortunately, now that we're coming on the backside of that, beginning to um, reincorporate, re, re come back into our communities, for some of us, we haven't changed really at all. And we're more excited about getting back to what was instead of looking ahead to what could be in God. And so I hope and pray that, that you've done time with God, that you've spent time with God. And, and unfortunately, a lot of that hasn't happened. And so instead of filling our time with God, we've just been filling our time with other things. And we should have been increasing into a habit so that when we come out of this, we would still do this. Because Paul was telling Timothy, there are false prophets, there are, there are perilous times ahead, and, and you need to be prepared. And so for each one of us, that is true. We need to be prepared. So what's essential? We've seen sports shut down completely. <clears throat> so we've seen then that sports really isn't essential. It might be fun, it might be entertaining, it might be all these things, but it, it's really not essential. And as I, as I view across Facebook, some of the posts are, everybody's just downhearted and distraught because, you know, sports isn't going on and we can't do this. And, and in reality, the reason is, is it's not really essential. And you can send all your hate mail to Post Office Box 117, Ottawa, Kansas, 66067. But I, I believe that. Sports isn't. I see that restaurants, forgive me for saying this, but they're not really essential either. Our lives could be lived without it. Yeah, you might have to drive through, but you haven't had the inside. And hopefully some of you have been eating at your own table for a while, or in the midst of your own family, or gathered up some way so you can communicate with one another, 
to realize that they're not really essential either. Travel, that's not really essential either. We've become so comfortable with that that we travel everywhere because we can, but as we see, that's not really essential. Now, we did see that that learning is essential, and our, and our children really understood that, but those multi-million dollar facilities that we have for school buildings, unfortunately, they're not as essential as they thought they were. Learning is. But how do we get that learning in our children, whether it be college or high school or elementary or preschool? And church buildings aren't as essential as we thought they are. Now, staying connected is super important, and that's super essential. And we use our facilities for ministries, and we use our facilities for other things, but we see the building itself is not so much, but the church is. And the church is itself, as it supports other ministries, like, like food pantries, as it supports other ministries like missionaries, that are supported through the church, those are important. We utilize the facility for good things, but the church is, is you, it's, it's the people. Some jobs that we thought were essential turned out to, they say, were not. And we can see them that they might not have been. And some jobs that we thought were not as essential all of a sudden became that we found out that they were essential because we needed some of the things that those jobs provided. Friends, co-workers, schoolmates, community people, not so essential. Family and church family, that's essential. And so the word essential defined in the dictionary means absolutely necessary. Extremely important. And so we're coming out of the backside of this pandemic. I see my bird saying again, Amen, Pastor. Go. Stepping on some toes. We're coming out of the backside of a pandemic. We've been facing this thing called coronavirus. But I believe we're facing a much greater pandemic than the coronavirus. And I've said this for years, but I really don't think anyone listens. And I, I believe that. I sometimes feel like, like John the Baptist wearing a uh, camel's hair coat and, and eating locust. Okay, now, but for the record, I do not have a camel, camel's hair coat, and I do not eat locust. Uh, I ate a lot of things, but locust isn't one of them. Okay. Because in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, it says, My people, that's God's people, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you as my priest. Because you've ignored the law of God, I will also ignore your children. And so God was speaking through the prophet Hosea to the Jews of that day, and God is also speaking to us today. And today God's saying, my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. And it's really a self-destruction. God's not destroying us. It's self-induced mm -hmm. because we don't know him. And since you refuse to know me, God's going to refuse to recognize. And since we've forgotten God, we won't see the blessings of God. Now today, I want you to make a list. Now here's what your paper is for. And on your paper, as we go up here, I want you to, across the top, I want, I'm want i going to make this really simple for you all.
What I want you to do is to take a piece of paper, whether it's big, small, uh, whatever. It doesn't even have to be white. It can be colored paper. It can be whatever you use. It can be a napkin if you have that in front of you. Uh, just don't write on your dashboard or on the kitchen table. Okay. Make a big T that divides your paper up. And on one side, up at the top, I want you to write essential. And on the second part, on the other part of the top, I want you to write non-essential. Now, throughout today, and then I want you to number 1 through 10 on each one of those. And you're going to have to come up with this yourself. But I want you, as we come out of this stay-at-home order, that's the bird saying amen. She's, she's got this message. She's hearing it today. And as we come out of this stay-at-home order, as we come out of this pandemic, as we go back to what we see as a sense of normality, you need to know yourself in writing, what is essential and what is not essential. And then you need to take what is essential and you need to live that. And you need to take that non-essential stuff and put it to the side. I can't make you do it. I can't force you to do it. But I'm encouraging you to do it today. And so before you, you know, before you criticize the government for putting the church in a non-essential status, I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you do the same thing? Do you treat the church and your relationship with God as essential or non-essential? Before this happened, did you come to service, church service, late? Did you leave early because you had something else going on? Did you skip services altogether because your your job, you had a meeting, you had a family trip, you had some recreational activity? Did you treat worship service like a music concert or some type of entertainment form and you rated it on a scale from 1 to 10? Did you listen to sermons and try to decide who it was for instead of listening to see if it was for you, which they all are? If you listen to this for me, you're listening for the wrong reason. If you're listening to hear what God has to say to you, that's what you need to hear. Because God can take this broken down, old, gray-haired, fat guy and speak to you a whole different message because of what he wants you to hear and what he wants you to do and act on in your life than what I ever say. I just follow where he leads to go and then allow that to take place. So did you treat the church as non-essential or did you treat the church as essential? I think we, we can't, we shouldn't fool ourselves because for a long time, history, um, not just at North Baptist Church, but throughout Franklin County, throughout the state of Kansas, throughout America, Christians have treated the church and their relationship with God as non-essential. Most churches have an A team and a, and a B team. The A team shows up one week. The B team shows up the other week. Sometimes the A and the B teams show up the same week. I guess that would be a C team. I, I'm not sure. Unfortunately, we come to church acting like we're blessing God with our presence instead of walking into, like Moses said, taking off his sandals and walking into a holy place because it's reverent and, and expecting to hear from God. And I really believe that's why uh, God utilized those things so early on in Scripture was because we needed to understand that God speaks to his people. And he speaks to the people that are listening and in the right place, in the right frame of mind to hear from him. That's why when the world looks at the church today, it sees hypocrisy. Our lives 
don't really show what we say we believe. We say we believe in God. We say we trust God for everything. We say we allow God to work and move in our lives, and yet that's not how we live because we don't show up, we, we don't serve, we don't give, we don't communicate. We, all those things come into place. Now, I'm not saying if you're on mandatory overtime that you can't work when that happens. I'm not saying if you're signing up to work because it's Sunday and you get extra money or whatever, it, is that really essential? Yeah, maybe you need it because maybe your bills are behind and maybe you got need to get caught up, and that's okay, but we, we need to evaluate. I'm talking about before all this happened. How do we treat the church? How do we treat our relationship with God? How do we treat our relationship with our fellow believers in Christ? We're not just living the comfortable life today that we're accustomed to so that we can just live it. God has shown us that all those things that we have and that we deemed as essential can be taken from us in an in a instant. And it means that we need to really reevaluate what is essential. I gave you the list. Only you can fill it out. But if, but if all you're going to do is just fill it out and not do anything with this or not do anything with this, you might as well just do this. It's important. This is important for each one of us to make a list on what is essential. When we come out of this, how are you going to live your life? There's a list of things that should be essential that you won't, you're not going to push away for nothing. And then there's a list of those things that are non-essential that you need to get away from. You need to stop. I, I've got them in my own life as well. So it's not like I'm saying, you do this and I don't have to. No, it, it, it's for all of us. You know, when, when families are, are wrestling with paying bills and avoiding a virus without a cure, or just trying to keep themselves occupied you know, this coronavirus has taken a toll on us all. I, I know. But all the hardships and the trials that we face in this life have already been defeated by Jesus. Amen. Several weeks ago, I, I gave you, I think on a Wednesday night, uh, they've all run together, uh, obviously for all of us, but 1 Corinthians 15, death, where is your sting? There's no hardship in that if we're in Jesus. He's the one that has defeated this. All our days are numbered. So all our hardships and trials we face in this life have been defeated by Jesus. And we're struggling through because we're trying to do things on our own. And, and no, I, I agree, we have pain, we have suffering, we have sorrow, uh, we have physical pain. And, and it's all brought on because of the sin nature that we have and lives within each one of us. So, so pain is real, I understand that. Suffering is real, I understand that. Depression is real, I understand that. But a lot of those things are because we're doing it on our own and we're focused on ourselves instead of focused on God and what we can do in and through Him. And so as Christians, we have the promise of e eternal life that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. And it, it, it includes... God's Holy Spirit living and dwelling within us. And so I ask you that today. Uncertainties will come your way. Guaranteed. It's going to happen. But we can enjoy the hope and the joy and the love and the peace that we talk about through, through Advent, through the Christmas season. That comes from God into into through this life and into eternity. Uh, our eternal life with Jesus doesn't just start when we die and we go to heaven. He wants us to live that today. He said, I want you to live in a life, John 10, 10, that's abundant. You can have an abundant life today. It's in Jesus. And it's focused on him, not on ourselves, not on this world. 
Now, let me go back. I'm going to go back and, and, and close with the scripture that I started with, uh, John or Second Timothy chapter three, sixteen and seventeen. All scripture, the Apostle Paul says, is God breathed. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that whatever your name is, right there, servant of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So you today need to answer the questions, what is essential? And you not only need to answer those questions, you need to be able to stand firm in them and live those things when we come out on the other side of this. And I've told you on Sundays, I've told you on Wednesdays, I really believe uh, that God has used this time, or he wants us to use this time to incorporate us in such a way that uh, he is building up the body of Christ so that when this stay-at-home order is done and we're able to be unleashed on the community, it should be like no other. I, I, I did, on Wednesday or Sunday, I read you the, uh, the sermon Peter gave in Acts chapter 2 when he um, read the message and all of them heard and 3,000 people were baptized. You know what? That could happen right here in Ottawa, Kansas or right wherever your community is. And it should. But it's not going to happen until people see Jesus living in us. Not just saying it, but living God's word. And so with that, that's where we're going to close today. So I encourage you to make your list. Check it twice. But you need to live the list that you make. Maybe you need to post it on your refrigerator. Maybe you need to post it on the mirror so every day you can see it. Maybe you need to hang it from your mirror in your car. Not over the mirror, but hang it from so you can see those things as you're going to work. This is essential to me, and this is how I need to live. These things are not essential, and I'm going to push them aside. So make your list and live by it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again this morning just for an opportunity to look in your word, and so we give you praise today. It's because of you that we have an opportunity to live. To have you, we have an opportunity to shine. And Father, again, I pray this morning, if there's some that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that Father, through this message today, they will realize that all our sinners have fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. But while we were yet sinners, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. Lord, that's not automatic, but it's a choice that we can make. And with that choice that we choose Jesus... He is victorious not over just sin and death, but he is victorious on all the struggles in which we face on a daily basis. Accepting Jesus doesn't mean that we're not going to have struggles. It means that there's hope to persevere through. The Apostle Paul said, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. And Lord, that's what we want. Well, help us to make that list, what's essential and what is not. Let us stick to it. And let us be bold in our faith and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, that he is the way and the truth and the life. And we can't come to you except through Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, so that's why I chose the song that we're getting ready to sing. <coughs> because... I think you might know it, you might have heard it, and if you haven't, this is a great time to learn it, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, all right, so sing with me as we sing. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hey, come on now. Hide it under a bushel. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel.
gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Okay, here we go. Let's work. Let the little light in mind. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, that's your light. Be sure and let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, as we close today, uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes here to make sure that you tell others on there, hey, goodbye, good to see you, good fellowship with you. Hold one another accountable to this list. Uh, maybe even post your essential list on Facebook. What a great way. Say, hey, you know, as I listen to church today, I, we were on Facebook Live, and Pastor encouraged us to make an essential list of how we're going to live when we come out of this on the backside. And so uh, this is what we're going to do. And so this is what I want to do. And so I want you to hold me accountable for, for those things. And so anyway, just uh, get those things going. Uh, be sure and uh, tell everybody, uh, great seeing you all, great being with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, allergies going on. Um, I, I do encourage you to uh, uh, continue to donate this ministry to help support the, the missionaries and the ministries that, that we're a part of. Uh, I really encourage you to download the Generosity by Lifeway app. I know a lot of people have been mailing checks. Uh, they've encouraged us to think about how many people actually have handled that by the time it gets to Linda. You know, a lot of hands uh, that have touched that and it's easy to give online through Generosity by Lifeway and you can give it uh, directly from your account to the church. Uh, nobody touches it. it. It's safe. It's easy. It's secure. Uh, you can see the Generosity by Lifeway app on the on the web page. You can see the Generosity app on the on the Facebook page here. And again, I want to share with you if you've got people that uh, you would like to see this message, uh, share it on your Facebook. If you've got people that can, uh, they don't have Facebook, you can go to our web page. www. Really simple. O-T-T-A-W-A-N-B-C dot org. And they can watch it on a video there, uh, on a YouTube. They can listen to just the sermon part on there, uh, on, the, on the audio version. And so those will be, those are usually listed and downloaded by uh, Sunday afternoon. So all those things are acceptable and, and profitable uh, for making you righteous, right? Amen. All scripture. All right, so with that this morning, I want to close out in prayer. Be sure and tell everybody, hey, everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, uh, fellowship with one another and as we pray. Lord, again today, we just thank you for your provisions in our life. Your, your, your precious love for us is just amazing. And so, Father, I pray that each one of us that listen, see, are a part of this message would make an essential list that would be something that we could stand firm on as we come out of this. Not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but for the future life that we live. And Father, we would push aside all those non-essential things that really are not important in our life that have um, succumbed to it. We've succumbed to them, and we've take, they take up so much of our life, and there's so much time, and yet they're so of little importance. And how important you are. And what you mean to each one of us. And, and Father, I pray that we're not a people that are destroyed because of lack of knowledge of you. But our relationship would grow. And it would be strong. And so, Father, help us remember that all Scripture, the old and the new, are important for us. You've given that to us to, as a model and a way to live. To respond to you. And to give our lives over to you. So we give you praise for this day. Again, we just thank you for each one that uh, is a part of uh, listening and sharing with us. And uh, we ask you to bless their lives today with just strength, encouragement, and joy. As the Father, we give you praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. All right, we're leaving. See you Wednesday night, uh, 7 o'clock, uh, Bible study. Uh, again, for my uh, singers, uh, don't forget, I've got one special music I'm going to use next Sunday. But I don't have anything for Wednesday. I don't have anything for the following Wednesday. So I need you to get some stuff to me.
uh, all you other people, encourage those singers to get on it, right? You want to hear this stuff. You want to hear them sing and play and and uh, be a part of the fellowship. Hey, love you guys. See you Wednesday night.